Let's look at some of the experimental evidence that led to the birth of quantum theory. So in this video, we'll be looking at Planck's contribution to quantum theory and also Wine's law, both of which are in the year 12 physics syllabus. Now in 1900, one of the problems that was really nagging physicists was that they couldn't get good agreement between the theoretical description of a black body radiator and the experimental measurement for the intensity versus wavelength graph. So a black body radiator is something which radiates radiation, which just depends on the temperature of that body. So stars are considered fairly good black body radiators. A lump of metal is an approximate black body radiator. So if you imagine a blacksmith heating up a lump of metal, it goes from being red hot to orange hot to yellow hot as it gets hotter and hotter. Now experimentally, a good way to build an ideal black body radiator is to take a cavity and make a very small hole in its side in order to measure the electromagnetic radiation inside that cavity. Now if we make the walls of that cavity all at a temperature T, then the cavity itself acts as a black body radiator with a temperature T. So what people were looking at was intensity versus wavelength graphs. So they came up with a function called spectral radiance. So the spectral radiance has the symbol S and it is a function of the wavelength. So we write it as S brackets lambda to indicate that it's a function of the wavelength. And this was equal to the intensity divided by a unit wavelength. Now because un the intensity is equal to the power divided by the area of an emitter, we can also say that the spectral radiance is equal to the power divided by a unit area of the transmitter divided by a unit wavelength. So physically, if we want to work out what this is in terms of intensity, if we take S lambda and multiply it by D lambda, then that is equal to the total intensity of the radiation between the wavelengths lambda and lambda plus d lambda. You can see a plot of the spectral radiance versus wavelength curve here. It shows the experimental results for a black body at a temperature of 2000 kelvins. So to give you an idea of how hot that is, the sun has a temperature of 5,800 kelvins. So this is a cooler than the sun, but still incredibly hot. So the problem was that classically, we couldn't describe the shape of this curve. So classically, the spectral radiance curve should have been given by the function S lambda is equal to 2 pi ckt divided by lambda to the 4 where K is Boltzmann's constant, which is 1.38 joules per Kelvin. Now that graph has been dotted onto the curve, well, the, the figure that you can see. And you can see at low wavelengths, there's really very poor agreement between the prediction of our formula and the experimental measurement. So this is actually known as the ultraviolet catastrophe. And you can see from the form of our equation, as lambda gets smaller and smaller and smaller, we expect this spectral radiance to just continue getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And experimentally, this doesn't happen. In 1900, Maxwell Planck proposed a new form for the spectral radiation function. So he proposed this based entirely on trying to get his function to agree with the experimental data. So he suggested that it had the form S lambda is equal to 2 pi C squared H over lambda to the 5 times 1 over E to the HC over lambda KT minus 1. And this was the first time that that constant H had been used in formulas. So H is equal to 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules seconds. And it's now known as Planck's constant after Maxwell Planck. 
So probably the most interesting part of this equation is actually that exponential. So if you look at the exponential, it's e to the power of hc over lambda kt. Now, back then it wasn't known, but you'll remember that e is a the energy of a photon is given by hf and you can see that this term occurs in that exponential because we've got an hc over lambda so that exponential can also be written as hf over kt so one way to explain why the spectral radiance function has the form Planck suggested is to assume that the energies of the atomic oscillators in the cavity walls are quantized but Planck was a firm believer in classical physics, so he strongly resisted this interpretation. It wasn't until 17 years later that Einstein was able to explain why the spectral radiance function had the form that Planck said it did. So Einstein based his explanation of two assumptions. He assumed that the energies of the cavity war atoms that are emitting the radiation are quantized and also that the energies of the electromagnetic radiation within the cavity are quantized in the form of photons with an energy e equals hf though they weren't called photons back then so in his theory einstein could also explain why atoms in the emit and absorb the radiation that they do and we'll be looking at this later and that the cavity was in equilibrium with the emitted and absorbed light. So we now have both theoretical and experimental evidence in agreement using Planck's form for the spectral radiance function. But we can actually do some things to this function to find out some other useful quantities. So one thing that we can do is work out, well, at what wavelength are we going to have the maximum intensity or spectral radiance? And how we do that is we differentiate the Planck spectral Planck's equation in terms of lambda. And what that'll do is it'll tell us where the turning point on our graph is. So doing that, we come up with an equation, lambda max, that's the maximum wavelength, times t, the temperature, is equal to 2,898 micrometers times kelvins. And this is actually known as Wien's law. And it tells us which wavelength a black body radiator with temperature T will emit the most amount of radiation at. So in the figure we've got of our black body emitter at 2000 kelvins, it turns out that the maximum radiation is emitted at 1.5 micrometers. So this is in the infrared region. Now another thing that we can actually get from Planck's equation is the equation that we've looked at before for the amount of power emitted by a black body radiator. So we were looking at this in the thermal topic and we saw that P was equal to sigma A E T to the 4, where sigma was the Stefan Boltzmann constant, A was the surface area of the emitter, E was the emissivity and T was the temperature. So how we do this, we're trying to get the total power emitted by our body. So what we do is we integrate Planck's constant over lambda. So that will give us the total intensity that is released by that body. But what we're trying to get is the power rather than the intensity. So remembering that intensity is equal to power over area, what we then need to do is multiply through by the area of the emitter. The math is quite complicated, but that is how we go about getting from Planck's constant to that equation that we've already seen for the power emitted by a black body radiator. 